ER, Wikipedia Audio ER is an American medical drama television series created by novelist and medical doctor Michael Crichton that aired on NBC from September 19, 1994, to April 2, 2009, with a total of 331 episodes spanning over 15 seasons. It was produced by Constant C Productions and Amblin Television, in association with Warner Brothers. Television ER follows the inner life of the emergency room of fictional County General Hospital in Chicago, Illinois, and various critical issues faced by the room's physicians and staff. The show became the longest-running primetime medical drama in American television history. It won 23 Primetime Emmy Awards, including the 1996 Outstanding Drama Series Award, and received 124 Emmy nominations, which makes it the most nominated drama program in history. ER won 116 awards in total, including the Peabody Award, while the cast earned four Screen Actors Guild Awards for Outstanding Ensemble Performance in a Drama Series. In 1974, Author Michael Crichton wrote a screenplay based on his own experiences as a medical student in a busy hospital emergency room. The screenplay went nowhere and Crichton focused on other topics. In 1990, he published the novel Jurassic Park, and in 1993 began a collaboration with director Steven Spielberg on the film adaptation of the book. Crichton and Spielberg then turned to ER, but decided to film the story as a two-hour pilot for a television series rather than as a feature film. Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment provided John Wells as the show's executive producer. The script used to shoot the pilot was virtually unchanged from what Crichton had written in 1974. The only substantive changes made by the producers in 1994 were that the Susan Lewis character became a woman and the Peter Benton character became an African American, and the running time was shortened by about 20 minutes in order for the pilot to air in a two-hour block on network TV. Because of a lack of time and money necessary to build a set, the pilot episode of ER was filmed in the former Linda Vista Hospital in Los Angeles, an old facility that had ceased operating in 1990. A set modeled after Los Angeles County General Hospital's emergency room was built soon afterward at the Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank, California, although the show makes extensive use of location shoots in Chicago most notably the city's famous L-Train platforms. Warren Littlefield, running NBC Entertainment at the time, was impressed by the series, we were intrigued, but we were admittedly a bit spooked in attempting to go back into that territory a few years after St. Elsewhere. After Spielberg had joined as a producer, NBC ordered six episodes. ER premiered opposite a Monday night football game on ABC and did surprisingly well. Then we moved it to Thursday and it just took off, commented Littlefield. ER's success surprised the networks and critics alike, as David E. Kelly's new medical drama Chicago Hope was expected to crush the new series. Production Spielberg left the show after one year as a producer, having made one critical decision with lasting effects, the Carol Hathaway character, who died at the end of the original pilot episode script, was retained. Crichton remained executive producer until his death in November 2008, although he was still credited as one throughout that entire final season. Wells the series' other initial executive producer, served as showrunner for the first three seasons. He was one of the show's most prolific writers and became a regular director in later years. 
Lydia Woodward was a part of the first season production team and became an executive producer for the third season. She took over as showrunner for the fourth season while Wells focused on the development of other series, including Trinity, Third Watch, and The West Wing. She left her executive producer position at the end of the sixth season but continued to write episodes throughout the series' run. Joe Sachs, who was a writer and producer of the series, believed keeping a commitment to medical accuracy was extremely important, we'd bend the rules but never break them. A medication that would take 10 minutes to work might take 30 seconds instead. We compressed time. A 12 to 24 hour shift gets pushed into 48 minutes. But we learned that being accurate was important for more reasons than just making real and responsible drama. Woodward was replaced as showrunner by Jack Orman. Orman was recruited as a writer-producer for the series in its fourth season after a successful stint working on CBS's JAG. He was quickly promoted and became an executive producer and showrunner for the series' seventh season. He held these roles for three seasons before leaving the series at the end of the ninth season. Orman was also a frequent writer and directed three episodes of the show. David Zabel served as the series' head writer and executive producer in its later seasons. He initially joined the crew for the eighth season and became an executive producer and showrunner for the twelfth season onward. Zabel was the series' most frequent writer, contributing to 41 episodes. He also made his directing debut on the series. Christopher Kulak was the series' most frequent director and worked as a producer on all 15 seasons. He became an executive producer in the fourth season but occasionally scaled back his involvement in later years to focus on other projects. Other executive producers include writers Carol Flint, Neil Baer, R. Scott Gemmill, D. Johnson, Joe Sachs, Lisa Zwirling, and Janine Sherman Bayrois. Several of these writers and producers had extensive background in emergency medicine. Joe Sachs was a regular emergency attending physician, while Lisa Zwirling and Neil Baer had pediatrics backgrounds. The series crew was recognized with awards for writing, directing, producing, film editing, sound editing, casting, and music. The original starring cast consisted of Anthony Edwards as Dr. Mark Green, George Clooney as Dr. Doug Ross, Sherry Stringfield as Dr. Susan Lewis, Noah Weil as medical student John Carter, and Eric LaSalle as Dr. Peter Benton. As the series continued, some key changes were made. Nurse Carol Hathaway, played by Juliana Margulies, who attempts suicide in the original pilot script, was made into a regular cast member. Ming N.A. debuted in the middle of the first season as medical student Jing Maydeb Chen, but did not return for the second season, she returns in season 6 episode 10. Gloria Rubin and Laura Innes would join the series as physician assistant Jeannie Boulet and Dr. Carrie Weaver, respectively, by the second season. In the third season, a series of cast additions and departures began that would see the entire original cast leave over time. Stringfield was the first to exit the series reportedly upsetting producers who believed she wanted to negotiate for more money, but the actress did not particularly care for fame. She would return to the series from 2001 until 2005. Clooney departed the series in 1999 to pursue a film career, and Margulies exited the following year. Season 8 saw the departure of La Salle and Edwards when Benton left County General and Mark Green died from a brain tumor. While left the series after season 11 in order to spend more time with his family, but would return for two multiple episode appearances in the show's final seasons. 
Goran Visniak as Dr. Luka Kova, Maura Tierney as Dr. Abby Lockhart, Alex Kingston as Dr. Elizabeth Corday, and Paul McCrane as Dr. Robert Romano, all joined the cast as the seasons went on. In the much later seasons, the show would see the additions of Mackay Pfeiffer as Dr. Greg Pratt, Scott Grimes as Dr. Archie Morris, Parmandir Nagra as Dr. Neela Rasgotra, Shane West as Dr. Ray Barnett, Linda Cardellini as Nurse Samantha Taggart, John Stamos as intern Tony Gates, David Lyons as Dr. Simon Brenner and Angela Bassett as Dr. Catherine Banfield. In addition to the main cast, ER featured a large number of frequently seen recurring cast members who played key roles such as paramedics, hospital support staff, nurses, and doctors. ER also featured a sizable roster of well-known guest stars, some making rare television appearances, who typically played patients in single-episode appearances or multi-episode arcs. Following the broadcast of its two-hour pilot movie on September 19, 1994, ER premiered Thursday, September 22 at 10 o'clock. It remained in the same Thursday time slot for its entire run. ER is NBC's third longest-running drama, after Law & Order and Law & Order, Special Victims Unit, and the longest-running American primetime medical drama of all time. On April 2, 2008, NBC announced that the series would return for its 15th season. The 15th season was originally scheduled to run for 19 episodes before retiring with a two-hour series finale to be broadcast on March 12, 2009 but NBC announced in January 2009 that it would extend the show by an additional three episodes to a full 22-episode order as part of a deal to launch a new series by John Wells titled Police, later retitled Southland. ERS final episode aired on April 2, 2009. The two-hour episode was preceded by a one-hour retrospective special. The series finale charged $425,000 per 30-second ad spot, more than three times the season's rate of $135,000. From season 4 to season 6 ER cost a record-breaking $13 million. TNT also paid a record price of $1 million an episode for four years of repeats of the series during that time. The cost of the first three seasons was $2 million per episode and seasons 7 to 9 cost $8 million per episode. A typical episode centered on the ER, with most scenes set in the hospital or surrounding streets. In addition, most seasons included at least one storyline located completely outside of the ER, often outside of Chicago. Over the span of the series, stories took place in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, France, Iraq, and Sudan. One early storyline involved a road trip taken by Dr. Ross and Dr. Green to California and a season 8 episode included a storyline in Hawaii featuring Dr. Green and Dr. Corday. Beginning in season 9, Storylines started to include the Democratic Republic of the Congo, featuring Dr. Kovac, Dr. Carter, and Dr. Pratt. We turned some attention on the Congo and on Darfur when nobody else was. We had a bigger audience than a nightly newscast will ever see, making 25 to 30 million people aware of what was going on in Africa, ER producer, John Wells said. The show is not about telling people to eat their vegetables, but if we can do that in an entertaining context, then there's nothing better. The series also focused on socio-political issues such as HIV and AIDS, organ transplants, mental illness, racism, human trafficking, euthanasia, poverty and gay rights. 
The Africa episodes of ER were discussed in a scholarly article by Julie Couples and Kevin Glynn published in the Annals of the Association of American Geographers in 2013. Other episodes used more creative formats, such as the 1997 live episode, Ambush Performed Twice, once for the East Coast broadcast and again three hours later for the West Coast and 2002's Hindsight which ran in reverse time as it followed one character, Dr. Luka Kovac, through the tragic events of one Christmas Eve shift and the Christmas party that preceded it. The episode Brothers and Sisters begins a crossover that concludes on the Third Watch episode Unleashed in which Susan enlists the help of officers Maurice Boscarelli and Faith Yokas to find her sister and niece. Development ER was filmed in 1.78 colon 1 widescreen from the start, even though it was not broadcast in widescreen until the seventh season when it began appearing in the 1080 IHD format. Since the sixth episode of season 7, it has appeared in letterbox format when in standard definition. As a result, the U.S. DVD box set features the widescreen versions of the episodes, including those episodes originally broadcast in 1.33.1 format. The episodes also appear in 1080i widescreen when rerun on TNT HD and Pop, though the first six seasons still run in full frame 1.33.1 on the digital TNT network. Only the live episode Ambush at the beginning of the fourth season and the title sequence for the first six seasons originated in the 1.33.1 aspect ratio. U.S. seasonal rankings based on average total viewers per episode of ER on NBC are tabulated below. Each U.S. network television season starts in late September and ends in late May which coincides with the completion of May sweeps. All times mentioned in this section were in the Eastern and Pacific time zones. Ratings for seasons 1 to 2 are listed in households, while ratings for seasons 3 to 15 are listed in viewers. In its first year, ER attracted an average of 19 million viewers per episode, becoming the year's second most watched television show just behind Seinfeld. In the following two seasons, ER was the most watched show in North America. For almost five years, ER battled for the top spot against Seinfeld, but in 1998, Seinfeld ended and then ER became number one again. The series finale attracted 16.4 million viewers. The show's highest rating came during Season 2 episode Hell and High Water, with 48 million viewers and a 45% market share. It was the highest for a regularly scheduled drama since a May 1985 installment of Dallas received a 46. The share represents the percentage of TVs in use tuned into that show. Throughout the series ER received positive reviews from critics and fans alike. It scored 80 on Metascore, meaning generally favorable reviews, based on 21 critics. Marvin Keatman from Newsday gave the show a very positive review, saying, It's like M.A.S. Asterisk H with just the helicopters showing up and no laughs. ER is all trauma you never get to know enough about the patients or get involved with them. It's just treat, release and move on. Richard Zoglin from Time stated that it's probably the most realistic fictional treatment of the medical profession TV has ever presented. Critical reactions for ERS first season were very favorable. Alan Rich, writing for Variety, praised the direction and editing of the pilot while Eric Mink, writing for the New York Daily News, said that the pilot of ER was urban, emergency room chaos and young, committed doctors. 
However some reviewers felt the episodes following the pilot did not live up to it with Mink commenting that, the great promise of the ER. Pilot dissolves into the kind of routine, predictable, sloppily detailed medical drama we've seen many times before. NBC launched the show at the same time that CBS launched its own medical drama Chicago Hope. Many critics drew comparisons between the two. Eric Mink concluded that ER may rate more highly in the Nielsen's but Chicago Hope told better stories, while Rich felt both shows were riveting, superior TV fare. The Daily Telegraph wrote in 1996, not being able to follow what on earth is going on remains one of the peculiar charms of the breakneck American hospital drama. ER. In 2002, TV Guide ranked ER number 22 on their list of TV's top 50 shows, making it the second highest ranked medical drama on the list. Also, the season 1 episode Love's Labor Lost was ranked number 6 on TV Guide's 100 Greatest Episodes of All Time list, having earlier been ranked number 3. The show also placed number 19 on Entertainment Weekly's new TV classics list. British magazine Empire ranked it number 29 in their list of the 50 greatest TV shows of all time and said the best episode was Hell and High Water where Doug Ross saves a young boy from drowning during a flood. In 2012, ER was voted Best TV Drama on ABC's 2020th special episode Best in TV, The Greatest TV Shows of Our Time. In 2013, TV Guide ranked it number 9 in its list of the 60 greatest dramas of all time and number 29 in its list of the 60 best series. In the same year, the Writers Guild of America ranked ER number 27 in its list of the 101 best written TV series of all time. Cast and Characters Broadcasting The series has been nominated for 375 industry awards and has won 116. ER won the George Foster Peabody Award in 1995 and won 22 of the 124 Emmy Awards for which it was nominated. It also won the People's Choice Award for Favorite Television Dramatic Series every year from 1995 to 2002. Over the years, it has been nominated for and slash or won numerous other awards, including Screen Actors Guild Awards, Image Awards, Glaude Media Awards, and Golden Globe Awards, among others. Episodes Crossover with Third Watch Format Impact Ratings Warner Home Video has released all 15 seasons in R1, R2, and R4. The first six DVD box sets of ER are unusual in the fact that they are all in anamorphic widescreen even though the episodes were broadcast in a standard 4,3 format. Only the live episode Ambush is not in the widescreen format. In 1996, Atlantic Records released an album of music from the first two seasons featuring James Newton Howard's theme from the series in its on-air and full versions, selections from the weekly scores composed by Martin Davick and songs used on the series. Critical Reception In March 2012, Warner Brothers. International Television announced that they would sell the format rights to ER to overseas territories. This allowed foreign countries to produce their own version of the series. In June 2013, Warner Brothers. International television and emotion production from Belgrade, Serbia, announced a Serbian version of ER. Urgentni Center premiered on October 6, 2014 on TV Perva. 
A Colombian version is also in the works. Awards and nominations Distribution Home video Soundtrack Other media Foreign adaptations <laughs>